This is the 10th video for the Animal Chiropractic class for Ethics and Legal Considerations. And in this video, we're going to talk about, uh, we're still talking about malpractice cases. In this video, we're going to talk about the element of damages. Now, just a quick review of damages in negligence cases in general. Uh, first option is nominal damages. In situations where a jury finds that the uh, uh, professional was negligent, but that the negligence did not cause any uh, damages, the jury can award a small amount like a dollar or ten dollars. Um, even though nominal damages are an option, no attorney is or, or client is going to be interested in pursuing a lawsuit if the only thing they're going to recover is those nominal damages. The second possible type of damages is compensatory damages. These are designed to compensate the person, the plaintiff who was injured or, the, or the, who owned the injured animal for the injuries that occurred. Uh, generally, that compensatory damage will include the fair market value. Now, the problem with veterinary, I shouldn't say the problem, but the unique thing about veterinary malpractice cases is the fair market value of the animal for dogs and cats is usually a very low number. Uh, even for, for special breeds, it's only a few thousand dollars. And it just isn't enough by itself to warrant pursuing any kind of malpractice case. And it certainly isn't worthwhile if, if the uh, attorney is going to have to hire expert witnesses and spend that money uh, for those experts. Nothing will be left for the uh, client and the attorney to divide up. Now, a few courts have said that in certain situations, special damages that are the unique value to the owner can be recovered. Now, those are pretty rare. Um, but there are situations, for example, where the animal is a service animal who has a special training and has special uh, uh, knowledge about or special skills in working with the owner. Uh, in those situations, the animal also has that unique value, that special damage value. Uh, general damages uh, include damages for things like pain and suffering and emotional distress. Now, when we're talking about uh, veterinary malpractice, we're talking about pain and suffering of the animal, not of the owner. So even though the owner may uh, experience extreme emotional distress, the answer under the law is they recover nothing for it um, and cannot recover anything for it. Uh, consequential damages include damages that are caused or are a reasonable consequence of the mistake. And that can include things like veterinary expenses, it can include lost income if the animal was used to produce income or loss of use, uh, may also include the expense of locating a substitute for that animal. Uh, so as you, as you look at that, in a typical uh, uh, family pet, even though the pet has a tremendous emotional value, the bottom line from, from a damages point of view is the family pet has a fair market value. It's a relatively low, inconsequential number. Now, there's also the, the opportunity for a jury to award punitive damages, but punitive damages are relatively rare. The jury has to make some specific findings about the uh, reasons for the misconduct, and the doctor has to be acting willfully, maliciously, intentionally or fraudulently or, or with gross negligence in order for a jury to find punitive damages. Now, even if a jury finds punitive damages, the amount of those punitive damages has to be reasonably related to the amount of actual damages. Now, the states do it in different ways, but generally if, if the amount of punitive damages is more than you know four or five times the amount of actual damages, the court, either the trial court or a court of appeals, is going to reduce the jury's award to something that they think is reasonably related to the amount of actual damages. So 
as you can see, a big part of the reason that there's a, a relatively low risk of uh, veterinary malpractice lawsuits is because the uh, uh, amount of damages is so much lower than the amount of damages that might be recovered if a human were injured. So for the next few slides and the next few cases, I want to talk about what's the measure of damages for a pet dog. And the courts have really struggled with this one because I think our natural inclination is to say a pet dog is really worth more than the uh, uh, fair market value or the cost of picking a dog up at the uh, animal shelter. Uh, we're willing to spend a lot more for caring for the animal, for food and toys and veterinary care. Uh, in some cases, owners will spend tens of thousands of dollars taking care of a, of a pet dog. And it just doesn't make sense to turn around after spending that money and say the pet dog is really only worth a few hundred dollars. So in Texas, a few years ago, the Supreme Court here decided the Strickland case. Now, this case was set up as well as any case that I've ever seen for the court to say the uh, uh, dog had special value. The liability in the case was clear. What happened is the owner uh, came to the shelter to pick up their dog. The dog had escaped and been picked up by animal control. The owner came to pick their dog up, but didn't have enough money to uh, recover the dog on that day. Uh, the owner was told, don't worry about it. You can come back in a few days. Um, and the owner told the shelter that that's what he was going to do. He'd come back with the money as soon as he had it. So as a result, there was a hold for owner tag that was placed on the dog's cage. But even though that tag had been placed on the dog's cage, when they were deciding which dogs to euthanize the next day, somebody made a clerical mistake and they euthanized the uh, dog in this case. Now, the other thing that makes this case bad is nobody contacted the owner to say, we made a horrible mistake. So what happened is the owner comes back a few days later. He now has the money to pick his dog up and he brings his children with him. And that's when he's told that we accidentally, that the shelter accidentally euthanized the dog. Now that's a huge, you know, that, that's a horrible way to tell somebody that you've made that kind of mistake. The uh, uh, question was, what's the value for this pet dog? It was a mixed breed with a very nominal value. Uh, and if you go back and read the court's opinion, I mean, the very first words in the court's opinion is Texans love their dogs. Uh, and it goes on to talk about the special bond and the way we treat our animals. 70% uh, of pet owners think of their pets as, as family members. 45% uh, of dog owners take their dogs on vacation. Uh, this one was kind of interesting. Over 50% of pet owners say they would rather be stranded on a desert island with a dog or a cat than with a human. Um, and and it, the, the court kind of concludes this discussion saying the human-animal bond is indeed powerful. And as you start reading the opinion, it looks like they're getting ready to say the value of this dog has something more than that, uh, more than the fair market value. But what the court comes down to is saying uh, measuring the worth of a beloved pet is an emotional determination, what the animal means to you and your family. But measuring a pet's value is a legal determination. And then the, the court goes on to say that that's the only thing recoverable in this case is the fair market value of the animal. So even though this case certainly and, and very obviously appealed to the uh, judges, and, and I think they tried to find a way to award something other than or in addition to the fair market value, uh, the bottom line is the, the dogs and cats are still viewed as property, and the only thing recoverable in Texas is going to be the value of the dog. 
Now, there is some indication that perhaps in addition to the value of the dog, if there were veterinary care to uh, help save the dog, uh, the expenses for that veterinary care might be recoverable in addition. Now, of course, in this case, the dog was euthanized, so there was no veterinary expense and there was no damage beyond the uh, value of the dog. Uh, here's an example of a case from Georgia, a uh, mixed breed dachshund, which again has very low value, but uh, uh, the animal was negligently injured. Um, and there was a claim for $67,000 in veterinary and other expenses. And the finding of the court in this case is the measure of damages is the full market value plus those other expenses. Now that's kind of an interesting uh, concept to me. Um, you know, if you think about a case like a, a totaled automobile, uh, there's no claim for the damages for, for repairs to the automobile. The only thing the owner recovers is whatever the fair market value of that automobile was. But dogs, I guess because of the uncertainty of whether veterinary care might work, the uh, owner may be able to recover, at least in Georgia, the owner has a chance to recover those veterinary expenses. Uh, here's an example of a case out of Wisconsin. Uh, 11-year-old dog was attacked by another dog. Uh, medical bills were $9,500 plus $2,700 for other expenses. Uh, the replacement cost for the dog was $2,700. But the bottom line decision of the court in this case was that dogs are personal property. And when personal property is damaged, the only thing you recover is the reduced value or the value of that uh, personal property and the cost to repair. But even if you're claiming the cost to repair the personal property, that is limited to the fair market value of the personal property. So in this case where the dog was only worth $2,700, by the way, I think it's interesting that an 11 year old dog is worth $2,700. It's not that I don't like 11 year old dogs. It just seems like a high value to me, but for whatever reason, that's what the value was. But the owner in this case, even though the owner had spent uh, $9,500 in veterinary bills, the owner was only going to be able to recover that $2,695 for the value of the dog. Uh, here's another example of a case out of Ohio. Uh, fair market value of the dog was $400 but the veterinary bills to treat the dog exceeded $10,000. Now in Ohio, the court did indicate, of course, the owner can recover the fair market value, but also indicated that other factors should be considered. Uh, and those other factors might include the veterinary expenses and whether they were reasonable and what was the recommendation to the veterinarian, etc. So they leave the door open for the owner to recover something in addition to the fair market value, uh, but this court opinion is, is not particularly clear on that. The Petco case was another case out of Texas that was a pretty, pretty tragic case. The groomer, uh, uh, the owner took the dog to Petco for grooming. Uh, Petco managed to lose the dog. The dog escaped, and several days later, the, the body of the dog was found where it had been run over by a vehicle. Um, this case was tried to a jury, and the jury, like you would expect, looked for opportunities to award some additional damages. So the bottom line result from the jury award was about a $40,000 award. Uh, the Court of Appeals reviewed the case, and they basically reduced the damages to about $1,500. Uh, the only thing recoverable was the replacement value for the animal, $500, uh, training school, $892, and microchip, uh, $52 fee. Um, 
So that's not very much. Now the other, or actually the biggest part of the award in this case, was the attorney's fees. Generally in a negligence case, the attorney's fees are not part of the recovery. So that tells me in this case, the attorney also argued that Petco breached the contract by allowing the animal to escape and not taking proper care of the, of the uh, animal. Uh, but that's all they recovered. The, the Court of Appeals struck the lost wages while searching for the dog. They struck the counseling cost for the owners and their family. Uh, they struck the uh, award for mental anguish and the intrinsic value and the exemplary damages. They simply reduced it, and I think this is typical of courts, even though uh, they th understand the value of dogs, the bottom line from a legal perspective is they look very specifically at, at the value of the dog and, and not much else. Uh, here's an example or a few examples of headlines and the reason I want to point these out to you is it's important to understand that when you see headlines like these that doesn't mean the uh, owner actually recovered that kind of money. In many cases these headlines are merely a, a statement about a jury verdict. So for example in the Petco case there would have been a headline that the jury awarded nearly $40,000 but at the end of the day the client received about $1,500 and the attorney received a little bit less than $7,000. Uh, that's hardly a, a good day or a good reward for taking an appeal or taking a case through a jury trial and up on to the Court of Appeals. Uh, this first case in Central Texas, the uh, jury awarded $47,000 for a dog's death. Uh, this Kentucky case, there's a $15,000 award. This California case, there's a $28,000 reward. Award. Uh, this one I think is particularly interesting because the Rottweiler had to have its teeth capped. And, and I have, have a hard time imagining that uh, capping a Rottweiler's teeth uh, justifies a judgment of $28,000. But that's what the California court did. Uh, here's another California court case where the uh, fair value, fair, fair market value of the dog was only $10. But even though the uh, fair market value was only $10, the owners spent uh, about $20,000 with these veterinarians who had misdiagnosed the dog and were giving unnecessary care, improper care. Uh, that ultimately resulted in the dog's death. Uh, jury estimated the value of the dog to be $10. It also awarded a special value for the dog in the amount of $30,000 and an additional $9,000 for unreasonable fees charged by the veterinarians. Now that sounds like a lot of money, but you should keep it in context of this last statement. The owner of the dog spent more than $350,000 taking his case to court. And at the end of the day, assuming this judgment stands, the award is less than $40,000. That's not a very good proposition to make. So bottom line here is, is I want to make sure you understand that in these cases involving pets, really any animal, uh, generally, the owner's recovery will be limited to the fair market value of the animal. Uh, there are a few states, uh, Georgia and Ohio, that have indicated the owner may also be able to recover veterinary expenses for the animal in addition to that fair market value. But the reality is the, the damages that are recoverable are very low. So the highest risk of malpractice when, in the veterinary practice is when you're working with high value animals like horses and when you're working with animals that injure humans. So you're dealing with all the damages connected with a human person's injury rather than the damages associated with loss of an animal which is treated as personal property.